I would much rather be doing another one of my pre-season videos focusing on the pure positives I've seen from Eric Ten Hag and this new-look Manchester United team being built under the Dutchman. But with the Cristiano Ronaldo situation that is unfolding at the club, I've sort of sat back for a couple of weeks. I haven't really... We've talked about it in the live streams. I've not done one of these shorter, uh, more precise videos on it because I've wanted to let the story unfold a little bit. And I wanted to do this video today now because I think it's really important to get a few things out of the way and said in the way I want to say it. So please, would you consider leaving your comments down below, watching this full video, please, before you do. It's a very emotionally charged situation, this Ronaldo story that's unfolding because of all the nostalgia attached to it, because of who Cristiano Ronaldo is. It's a very charged situation, as I said. But it's all started back in the 2nd of July when Cristiano Ronaldo told Manchester United that he wanted to leave. Duncan Castles came out with a story. I just dismissed it out of hand. That was clearly the wrong thing to do because it's completely developed since then. As we all know, Duncan Castles is the mouthpiece of Jorge Mendes. And this is the story now. 27th of July, 25 days later, Ronaldo has refused to budge and he's told Manchester United that he wants to leave. Fabrizio Romano confirming the same thing again. No changes yet. United insists he's not for sale, but Ronaldo has told Ten Hag again in the last 24 hours that he wants to leave. And the main thing I want to say at the beginning of this video is I don't begrudge Ronaldo for thinking that in any way, shape or form. The thing I really begrudge Ronaldo for at this point is the timing of it all. Let's rewind here to the 22nd of May. You'll see this was the last round of the fixtures in the Premier League. Manchester United losing 1-0 to Crystal Palace to confirm our position as sixth in the Premier League. That's on the 22nd of May. And we didn't hear this until the 2nd of July. That doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't sit right in any way, shape or form. If Ronaldo really wanted to leave for the Champions League, and that really is the main reason, then why are we hearing about it now? And of course, a big reason why I didn't want to speak about this was because if, if we rewind to the 2nd of July, of course, we heard it was for family reasons and for personal reasons. That's why the club gave him time off. That's why he didn't turn up for five days of preseason training. That's why he wasn't on the preseason tour. And that's why he didn't turn up until the first day back at Carrington alongside his agent. But the way that this timeline has uh, unfolded and what's happening now and since with Ronaldo still insisting that he wants to leave, you have to question whether it really was. A, a cover up is not the right word to describe it because it's not a cover up. But I feel like his, his real intentions for leaving have got uh, mainly to do with the Champions League and the Champions League alone. But let's be completely, as I say, there's a, a, to try and step back from the situation, to try and take your red tinted specs off a little bit and to try and take the emotion out of it, none of us are surprised by it. First of all, none of us would begrudge Ronaldo for leaving if he had told us at the end of the season, right? None of us. I think he would have walked away and everybody would have said, thank you for that season. It was great to see you back in the, the club, finishing as with the Samat Busby player of the year, 20 plus goals. It was as good as it could have been in a season that was full of turmoil. But we're not surprised really that what's happening now is happening now. This is going back to 2008, of course, after we won the double, after he was a Ballon d'Or winner, Ronaldo pushed hard for a move away from Manchester United. We stuck up, we, we dug our heels in and we said, no, he stay for one more year and then got his move to Real Madrid. Back when we signed Ronaldo again, when Ronaldo came back, look at the date there, the 27th of August last year. He started the season not wanting to be a, 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 Real, sorry, a Juventus player. And he... Juventus just waited and waited and waited. And then, of course, he tried to move to City. And then we swooped in and we signed him right at the end. Ronaldo did the same thing at Juventus and he got what he wanted. And he's trying to get what he wants now at Manchester United. And this thing here is not only Simon Jones from the Mail reporting this. It's actually Duncan Castles. If we were to scroll through here and we were to scroll down this article, we can see it just down here. Um, right there. Real Madrid Ford, sorry, Real Madrid Ford. The Ford is said to have been encouraged by initial interest from Atletico Madrid and Bayern Munich and hopes that United will be persuaded to relinquish the second season of an initial two year contract. So, basically, what that means, Ronaldo is asking Manchester United to tear up that contract and let him walk out. Cristiano, my friend, given that money isn't an issue to you because you've turned down that Saudi Arabia deal worth 300 million, if you want to get out of that contract, you pay your way out of that contract. You pay it up in full 
what Manchester United will be owed and what Manchester United would lose by you getting rid of that contract. That includes the fee that we would get for you and that includes anything else in between. You pay that if you want to leave and if you do that, that's your choice. But the thing I find most strange about all of this situation, right, going back to when Jorge Mendes came out and Cristiano Ronaldo came out and said, look, it's time for me to leave and he's doubling down on it here despite speaking to the club, despite Manchester United telling him, despite Eric Ten Hag telling him to his face, I want you to be in my plans for next season. Ronaldo still is pushing to leave. The thing I find strange is this. Chelsea, 14th of July, ruling out a move for Cristiano Ronaldo. Bayern Munich director Oliver Kahn. We discussed Ronaldo internally. I consider him one of the greatest footballers ever. But we came to the conclusion that despite appreciation for Ronaldo, he would not fit our, into our philosophy in the current situation. But don't worry, there's interest from Atletico Madrid. No, there's not interest from Atletico Madrid. And it was crazy to think there was ever going to be. This is a statement from their fans. In light of the possibility of signing Ronaldo, if it is more than a simple rumour without any basis, we express our absolute rejection of his hypothetical joining of our club. This is from the fans, of course, not the actual club itself. The aforementioned player represents the antithesis of the values that constitute the hallmarks of Atletico Madrid. They kind of make themselves sound like saints and a bit of arseholes on the pitch. I wouldn't say they've got the morals in that sense, but in terms of what they represent, Ronaldo is the antithesis. Even in the un unlikely hypothetical case that a player in steep decline, such as Ronaldo, can guarantee us a trophy, we wouldn't accept his signing. Atletico Madrid fans there with CR7 not welcome banners. Ronaldo, not only has he shot him in, himself in one foot, and I've explained this in the live stream, he's shot himself in both foot. He's got, no, he's got nothing. He's backed himself into a corner now where Cristiano Ronaldo is ostracising himself from Manchester United as a football club by putting in this transfer request. He's ostracising himself, ostracizing himself from Manchester United fans who we were so steeply entrenched in nostalgia that we've... We've ignored a few things and we, we've sort of let a few things slip because it's Ronaldo. He can't do that anymore, not in the interests of Manchester United. And he's doing all of this whilst at the same time as club by club by club, everybody's pulled away and pulled back from Cristiano Ronaldo. And he hasn't really got many options. And that's where we find ourselves. And I tell you, I, I, let me tell you right now, this is the biggest reason that United fans are angry with Ronaldo. It's not to do with De Gea or, or Martinez or Eriksen. And it's not completely just to do with Eric Ten Hag. But all of this together, for the first time in a long, long time, we can hand on heart say as United fans that we're excited about what's coming next. We've got confidence and a bit of belief in our football club that we're going to come out of the trenches, come out of the swamp that we've been sitting in for years, and we're not going to be a joke of a football club anymore. That we're making the right sorts of signings, like Martinez, like Ericsson, that we've got the right man in charge that really is going to reinstall this new discipline into a club that's just become consumed by player power over the years. And we're done with the circuses of the likes of Paul Popper and Jesse Lingard and everything and the distractions that they all present. And then all of a sudden, this Ronaldo situation comes off the back of a really positive preseason. It's not just about the wins. It's about all the th things that we've seen in the training drills, all the messages from all the players. Everybody's on board. Everybody's pulling in the same direction. And Cristiano Ronaldo is the anchor. It now is holding us in a bit of a standstill. With nine days to go until the, the, the season starts, we don't know whether Cristiano Ronaldo is going to stay at the club that he doesn't want to be at, a club that he's handed in a transfer request. It, no matter what the club is, uh, is trying, to, no matter what the club has said, no matter what Eric Ten Hag has said, Ronaldo has made his mind clear. I want to leave. And it's, it's a bit acting like a bit of a petulant child at this point. But Ronaldo, as I said, my friend, if you really want to leave, then just pay up that contract. If you pay up that contract and you buy it out and you pay all the penalties for it, then Manchester United then we don't have a hold over you anymore. You're not contractually obliged, obliged to the club anymore. But what's going on now, it doesn't help United at all. And I want it to be resolved. And if it's not going to be resolved by Ronaldo being happy at the club, and it's not going to be resolved by United selling him to Chelsea or by Munich or Atletico Madrid, then Ronaldo, buy out that contract. If money's not an issue to you, if the Champions League is that important to you, then you'll do that. And then we move on from it. 
But I don't want this to drag until, look, as I said, I don't want this to drag until the 27th of August when Ronaldo got a deal back to Manchester United and Ronaldo goes somewhere else and right at the end. We've got to get this done swiftly. And it's the distraction. As I said, for me, that's the thing that I think is annoying United fans the most. We've seen a glimpse of something new and we're getting dragged into something that we've seen before that we don't want to see that has to stop if we're going to move on as a football club. So that's why I wanted to do this video. I hope I've sort of summarised it all. I feel like I accurately and fairly represent a moderate voice in United fans. I don't represent all Manchester United fans. Shit me, I don't at all. Maybe I've got to change the name of this title, but I don't like what's going on. I don't begrudge United Ronaldo wanting to leave. I really disagree with the timing of it all and the fact that he's just club by club by club, people are pulling out. Ronaldo's running out of options, ostracising himself from a fan base who loved him and ostracising himself from a club who's bought him twice. He's running out of options. Maybe the only option left is to buy himself out. If he really isn't going to be happy at Manchester United, I don't want him at Manchester United. Simple as that.